Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Red Rising by Stonemaier Games. This game is based on the novel series by Pierce Brown. The game plays 1-6 to six players, takes roughly 45-60 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in this game, you will be playing as up to 14 different casts of people. You're basically going to try and gather and accrue an assortment of followers and break the chains of society to uh, basically unsubjugate yourself from the golds. And at the end of the game, after gathering a specific number of cards in your hand and or followers, you're going to basically score points. And if you can make the most points at the end of the game, you will win. It's a pretty simple game with a complex strategy that involves utilizing the cards to the best potential that you possibly can while attempting to gain three different types of resources to trigger an end for the game. Let's show you the setup, then of course how to play, and finally my review. The setup for the game Red Rising is very simple. The first thing you'll do is you'll take the game board and place it out in the middle of all players so that they can easily reach it. Then you will take the deck of cards, shuffle them, and deal out two to each of the four locations in the board. The first one will be Jupiter, Mars, Luna, and the Institute. Make sure that you show the color, the value, and the name of each of the cards presented in each of the fields. Place the rest of the card deck based in the middle of the board where there's a space. Then you'll take the helium pool and place all the helium tokens inside of it. Next, you'll take the Red Rising die, and you'll also take this a Sovereign token and place it somewhere within reach of all players. Deal out five cards from the deck to every single player playing the game. And give every single player a random faction card. Flip it over and reveal it, and then give them a player aid based on that color, as well as give them the institute tokens they will be using, or in influence tokens, up to a total of 10 unless you're playing with a two player game. Finally, if the yellow player is playing, give them the yellow first player token, and if he, is, he or she is not playing the game, then you'll simply go ahead and randomly distribute it out. After that, place everybody who is playing's fleet marker onto the fleet track and you are ready to begin the game. Remove any other tokens, cards, and faction pieces that are not needed, as well as if you're not playing the solo mode, you can put that back in the box as well. Red Rising is a very simple game to play. There are basically two things that you can do on your turn. You can either choose to lead, or you can choose to scout. Most of the time you're going to be doing the lead action because that will allow you to gain the most benefits. Whereas Scout is typically something you're going to do when you just want to keep the hand of cards that you currently have. When the yellow player takes their first turn, they will choose to most likely lead. When you lead, you are simply going to take one card from your hand and place it in any of the locations presented on the board. There are four locations available, Jupiter, Mars, Luna, and the Institute. When you place your character, make sure you place it right below the value and name of the previous card in the location that you placed it in. Then, if it has a deployability, which is going to be a square symbol with an arrow pointing up, you can take that active ability. After you've taken that ability, you can then choose to take any card from any location at the bottom of that location or the top card of the deck. When you take the bottom card of a location, you'll put it into your hand. Additionally, if you choose a location as opposed to the deck, you will take the bonus ability of that location. Like for instance with Jupiter, you'll be able to move your fleet marker one space forward on the fleet track. Or maybe you take the Institute, allowing you to place an influence marker in the Institute location. And of course, if you choose to take the deck, you will be able to roll the die and gain the benefit based on what the die says. It could be either one of the four different locations here, or it could be something else like taking a card from the deck and placing it down onto the field. Additionally, after you have basically taken your card and placed it down on the board, taken the deployability and removed a card, you may never ever take the same card you put down and you must always select a different loca location to place a card as well. That being said, after you trigger that, you will pass your turn to the next player and they will either choose to lead or scout. If they're scouting, all they're going to be doing is taking a card from the top of the deck and placing it down on the bottom area of one of the locations. You will not get the deployability, you will not get a bonus ability, but you will get to keep the cards in your hand. And the reason for this is because the game will end when two of the three triggers are activated by one player, or when all three of the different triggers have happened between all players. One of the triggers is the fleet track will reach seven or more from one player, 
The other one is the Institute will receive seven or more counters or uh, influence from one player. And the final one is one player will receive seven or more influence. When that happens, or when one player gathers two of these, that will trigger the end of the round, in which case everyone takes a full turn, making sure that it's fair turns, and then scoring will begin. And scoring is very simple. You have this handy dandy notebook here, which will tell you, you'll score points for any of the end of game triggers from the cards. You will score points based on the victory points of the card in the top left hand position of each card in your hand, as well as any bonus VIP uh, victory point abilities on the bottom of the card. Some of them require specific needs. Uh, then you'll move on to the fleet track. You'll score points based on how far your fleet marker goes. You will score points based on the number of helium you have, how, if you have the unique and special uh, Sovereign token here. And you'll also score points uh, based on um, the Institutes as well as minus 10 points for each card you have in your hand over the number seven. You never want to have more than seven cards in your hand, but if you do, it's not necessarily a penalty either because while you might lose 10 points, that card might be worth 20 or even more. And after that, you'll calculate your scores, and whoever has the most points is the winner for the game Red Rising, a fairly simple game that involves placing a card and taking a card to create the perfect hand and trigger the victory conditions, thusly having you have the most points at the end of the game. All right, so let's talk about Red Rising the game. Uh, this game specifically reminds me of a game called Master of Wills. In Master of Wills, you're basically playing a two or four player tug of war game in which you're placing cards down, moving them around the board and attempting to push them all into your side of the field as well as remove cards from your opponent's side of the field and they're trying to do the exact opposite and they're doing that by placing cards and involving activating their abilities and then kind of uh, playing cards from their hand. Uh, this one here is very similar in that way in which you're going to basically be having a certain number of cards in your hand placing one down in the location, taking the deployability, and pulling out the rest of the cards, uh, or one of the cards, and taking that ability that you took from the area you took the card from. You're trying to get collections as opposed to control the most victory points, and collections in this game generates victory points. One character, like maybe Helga, will need the, the character called Calopia. And if you have them both in your hand at the end of the game, maybe you'll get an extra 20 points from each of them. And so you're kind of trying to hand manage and collect the right cards you need. And you're also trying to watch your opponents. What cards are they looking for? What are they attempting to do on their turn? Or are they attempting to sabotage you? Every, all the while, there's also these victory conditions that are triggering throughout the game. You're gonna have the Institute, you're gonna have Helium, you're gonna have the Fleet Track, and the farther along people get on these tracks, the more points they're going to get. And you have to also be careful of when and how you want to trigger the end game, because when that happens, that might put you in the lead or it might push you off. Another unique thing too is uh, the Sovereign Token. Uh, why would you want this? Especially why would you want this if you already have this? There's a bunch of abilities that give you the Sovereign Token uh, when you deploy or when you take. Uh, basically what happens here is you're going to enact your special ability on your character card. And this one says whenever you gain the token, you place an influence on the Institute. So it's a fast track. This Diana faction is able to place a lot more influence on this track here when gathering the Sovereign Token. And while the Apollo is able to go first, they also have a deployability or a, a sovereign token ability as well. And when you get that sovereign token ability, whether you have a sovereign token or not, as long as the card or the ability says that you gain a sovereign token, taking the card and placing it down on the board here. This board will fill up in each of the different areas, but most likely it's going to actually, you're gonna see a decrease in the availability of cards here. And players are gonna to have to actively try and put out cards on the occasion, depending on what come out, comes out. Another thing to note here, here is the faction colors um, have a wide variety. I think there was like 13 different types. Uh, the golds are probably the, the most um, useful, but uh, they're also not very, they don't work with other factions very well. They're kind of evil in a way. And so you're trying to kind of situate your hand to give you the best benefits. You'll look at one of the cards here and it'll be like, oh, Alfred, this guy here is going to give you 10 points if he's with Nero and 10 points if with Jopa, and he gets 10 points himself. So if you have Nero and Jopa in your hand, three cards out of maybe the seven or eight you have, then that's going to net you 30 points for this card alone. And most likely Nero and Jopa will also have some type of ability that helps when you have this guy in your hand. And then Helga, 
Helga is going to get 16 points if Jax uh, uh, Telamanus or the Pax is in your hand. And of course, 14 points is nothing to scoff at as well. Basically, attempting to manipulate cards in your hand. And I really, really enjoy games like this. And that's why it kind of reminded me of Master of Wills, because you're manipulating the board in that game, and in this one you're manipulating your hand. And a little bit for the board as well, as to what your opponents can and cannot do. Sometimes scoring the best action in your hand is not always going to be the best because it might cost you combos. It might cost you a location that you might want to place in. Sometimes you might want to use the Lunar ability, but you also might want Alfrune. And you have to kind of make these decisions based on what is available to you and look for combos. Sometimes a combo will let you deploy an additional card in a different area or move cards around to kind of net you the benefits that you kind of want. And I really, really enjoy that strategy to the game. This game is very simple. It's very quick and very easy to understand with a lot of thinkiness, which I really appreciate. Uh, this is an excellent little game here. And it's interesting that it, cause I, I keep bringing back Master of Wills because it's just so very similar in, in that design. But both of these games, in my opinion, share a space on the shelf. I've actually put them next to each other based on what I think my audience would like to play because either of these games I'd be easily able to jump into. And they're very easy to explain as well. But the thinkiness and the combos and the perspective and the choices all come down the into the gameplay that is rising uh red rising and i really 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 think you guys will enjoy this game uh this game's quality is excellent high quality pieces stonemeyer games doesn't disappoint as well um you're gonna see a lot of uh, Jamie Stegmeier type things going on in the game with the different types of tracks and how they use the different tokens. Uh, kind of like a staple to the Stonemeyer series in my opinion, which I, I really appreciate as well. So it makes it easier for people who have played those previous games how to understand the nuanced aspects of this game as well, while being a completely separate and different game. I don't actually know what other reviewers thought of this game. Um, I think if they're huge uh, fans of the previous types of games that he's been making, this one's gonna be definitely a step uh, in a different direction. But in my opinion, it's not a step in the wrong direction. I, I really, really enjoy games like these and management type games and something simple and easy and, and probably more lighter than most Stonemeyer games are is kind of a refreshing little touch. In my opinion, this is an easy pickup. It's an easy game, easy game that's going to stay in my collection. And just like Master of Rules, this would get my seal of approval. I, I really, really enjoyed Red Rising. I like playing it with two, three, four, five, and six players. And uh, I haven't played the Automata version. I don't play them play the single player version. Not for games like this. It's not really my cup of tea. If I were to say that there's a negative in this game, um, I guess if you don't like hand management games, if you don't like... Um, the idea that players can take pieces from your combo, players can kind of watch and see what you're pulling and how you're pulling it, and they can kind of mess you over. They can kind of hate draft throughout the game to prevent you from getting what you want, as opposed to playing the game in a way to kind of make them succeed, uh, then you might not like a game like this. Uh, additionally, some of the cards are definitely better than others, but that's the point. Uh, one card at the end of the game I thought might be good was you take the top seven at the end of the game and you will choose a color and then you reveal and based on the color you chose you'll get those cards and put them in your hand. Uh, I thought that was gonna be a lot better but I didn't realize how many actual factions were in this game and when I called the color I got nothing which was pretty disappointing. So the more you play this game the better you're gonna get at it and the, the less disappointed you'll be in certain cards as to how they work and it's always about the odds and statistics of what's gonna come out but tons of combinations. Uh, you guys are going to like Red Rising if this sounds like a game for you. All right, guys, thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Red Rising by Stonemeyer Games. Go ahead and check out the link in the description where you can pick this game up. It's currently available on for retail on the Stonemeyer Games website and probably also on Amazon as well. Affiliation link down below. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away the game Drop Drive. It's currently on Kickstarter and you can choose to pick that up if you'd like. Moonshell Mermaid game is coming out and it will be available um probably in the next couple months i'm hoping we're, we're getting you know it's on the boat and we'll see how long it takes but you know how shipping delays are and we should have an update very soon um that's probably about it thank you guys so much for watching and as always i look forward to gathering members from 14 different factions to fight against the gold faction with you because i'd probably recruit you you know next time